For the last year, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has charmed the pants off Americans. His daily briefings and television program, Cuomo and the COVID, won him an Emmy. Look, all this says to me is that most of mainstream television is such piles of trash that a governor's press briefings, where he spent a portion of it recounting the days of the week, was riveting. Cuomo was also praised for how attractive he is. These fans were labeled Cuomo sexuals. And look, I don't particularly understand why people thought he was that attractive, you know? And look, I, 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 I am an appreciator of beauty in all forms. I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, that a gentleman is, is attractive or, or not. But with, with the Cuomster, I just do not get it. I don't get the Cuomo sexuals. But Andrew Cuomo is not who the press briefings show him to be. In fact, Andrew Cuomo is a neoliberal capitalist that is currently embroiled in scandals. The most recent of these scandals involved the sexual harassment and misconduct allegations levied against the governor by five women, most of whom worked for Cuomo. The women claim that Andrew Cuomo has touched them inappropriately and, and made lewd remarks to them. Aside from the obvious violations of personal space and the governor's refusal to resign and his apologies are making headlines. Now, one of the images circulating around is of Governor Cuomo holding a woman's face in his hands. In the apology edition of Cuomo and the COVID, he claims this is how he and his father, a former New York governor, would greet people to make them feel comfortable. I suppose suppose it's the idea of holding a person's head in your hands to say hey i could crush your face with the palm of my hands but i'm not you can trust me i'm fairly certain mafia dons look at that and say whoa 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 look that's a bit much okay you gotta ask if it's cool to hug or grab a face you know, if you don't, you're just coming off as a psychopath. But serial killers applaud Governor Cuomo for spreading fear into the hearts of the unworthy with your masculine power. Now, Cuomo goes on to say that he, he was very recently at an event in Queens where he was hugging and kissing other politicians and guests. Um, go uh, Governor, did you... Like, forget that there was a global pandemic being spread by aerosol droplets. I mean, I mean, isn't that what your Emmy-winning show, Cuomo and the COVID, is all about? Uh, what about consent? Did these people say it was okay for you to hug and kiss them? Or did you just do it because you assumed that's what it was going to do, that, that, that's what it's going to take to make these people feel comfortable with your presence? Not only is... Is he someone who d is disrespecting people's personal spaces? But apparently, that need is making him a super spreader. And it means Cuomo was literally trying to ch charm America's star spangled pants off. But hey, that's how it's done in the Cuomo household. Now, this changes what the term Cuomo sexual really means. Now, Andrew Cuomo's apology isn't a real apology. His press conference starts with a legal disclaimer. I mean, what apology starts with a legal dis disclaimer? Since he's in, uh, being investigated, his legal counsel has advised him not to make any statements about this situation. Cuomo, Cuomo flips the script and pleads ignorance and therefore is a victim himself of the old ways. He claims his words and actions were, quote, playful, and that he's a frequent flirt. Look, I'm not an expert on flirting, but I'm fairly certain telling a woman that you want to kiss her on the lips or grabbing her face isn't flirting, nor is it playful, especially when you're that woman's boss. Cuomo claims his actions were misinterpreted by the women and the press, but he's sorry if anybody was hurt or offended by, quote, it. 
He's very careful about not naming exactly what he's being accused of doing. His apology boils down to, I'm sorry you feel that way. And that is not a real apology. It's what abusers do to flip the blame on the victims of their abuse. There's no acknowledgement of the action that caused the pain and the, and the responsibility of the pain itself falls on the victim. It's the victim's fault that they're in pain. If they would have just been less of a pansy, this wouldn't have been a problem. You should just let me grab you wherever I want. And if you just did that, you wouldn't feel so bad. Look, this kind of apology is what gaslighters and narcissists do to deflect and distance themselves from their wrongdoing. And lawyers encourage this behavior so they can get these kinds of peoples off so they can go about abusing people into their twilight years. And I myself have been a victim of the gaslighter's apology for years. I mean, at first you think, well, it's just a mistake and they'll improve. But then it's the same type of apology that comes over and over and over again till you realize that th there's not a, really an apology and this person is is not going to change in fact they're likely to get worse and blame you for all the problems that ail them but that's not where andrew cuomo's abuses end a week before the first allegation dropped the cuomo administration was caught falsifying nursing home death rates in their reports to make new york appear safer than it was Back in July of 2020, the reported number of deaths from nursing homes were one-third the actual death rate. And this was because in the state of New York, they were admitting elderly without giving them a COVID test. And this confirms that Andrew Cuomo is the ultimate super spreader. But there was a reason why the Cuomo administration felt they must lie. Trump... Okay, look, Trump could have used the, the correct numbers as a way to chastise the Democratic Party, and rightfully so, considering they were championing for safety and then go about doing the exact opposite of that. But, but, but Trump, is, Trump was the problem. It was Trump's fault. Because had it not been for Trump, they would have come out and told the truth. You know, was if it was Joe Biden in office, they would have been like, hey... We're killing a lot of old people because we kind of don't care. And everybody was like, wow, man, what a brave thing to say from the Cuomiest of all the Cuomosexuals. The DOJ now did investigate this fraud, you know, by sending Cuomo's office a questionnaire. I mean, what else could they do? They, they had to falsify the reports because Trump might have been mean to them. Ugh. Could you imagine? This is the buzzfeed of criminal investigations. And as if that wasn't enough, Cuomo was ordering small pharmacies to throw away perfectly good vaccines. Smaller pharmacies usually get a shorter list of people who are eligible to get the vaccine right now. So in a lot of cases, they end up with some excess doses. The logical thing to do is to move down the list or offer the vaccine to other folks in the community that have been waiting or offer it to locations that might have a shortage. But under Cuomo's law, they have to destroy the excess vaccines or face penalties that include a million dollar fine. And if all of this wasn't enough, Cuomo's administration is also responsible for one of New York's most prominent bridges failing. The Mario Cuomo Bridge, named after his father, has shown structural integrity issues. In 2006, a iron worker was hit in the face by a bolt that was wasn't placed properly when he was trying to tighten it with a torque wrench. Now look, I'm not man enough to know what a torque wrench is, but I am man enough to admit that I don't know what a torque wrench is. The bolt hit this guy in the face, splitting his lip open. I mean, that guy's lucky that it didn't do any more damage. When the safety director pointed out the problem with the bolts on the bridge, he was fired. A whistleblower later came out and said that the construction company hired to work on the bridge committed fraud. The case went all the way up to the Supreme Court of New York and since then, since 2017, has been sealed. And the New York Thruway Authority has said that they will not unseal records to prove that the bridge is actually meeting standards. 
Cuomo is one of the Democrats that's also in trouble for pushing schools to reopen despite the science saying otherwise. And Cuomo is also known for cutting hundreds of millions of dollars from Medicaid and hospital beds right before the pandemic began. He also slashed property taxes for the rich while the citizens of his own state, the ones he claims elected him and he is beholden to, are on the verge of losing their homes and everything they worked for. But that's really what this is all about, getting Americans back into the workforce and making money for the rich. Now, corporate media was fawning over Cuomo from the start of the pandemic, and because he he could string words into a sentence that made sense and didn't end in a racial epithet, he was being pushed to replace Joe Biden for the office of the president. And if that would have happened, it would have unequivocally proven that presidents are chosen, not elected. But after the news of the sexual harassment allegations broke, corporate media decided to switch sides. From New York Times to the Wall Street Journal, a daisy chain of corporate media were calling for Cuomo's resignation. Some independent journalists were claiming that this was done in an effort to sensationalize the harassment stories over the ma other major scandals. I'd say it's probably a bit of both. The way I see it, Cuomo was one of the top contenders for the next Democratic primary, whether it's in 2024 or 2026, pending what actually happens to Joe Biden. Once the nursing home and the vaccine scandal started circulating around independent media and corporate media was saying silent, they needed something to get Cuomo out of the spotlight of massive negative press. The opportunity struck when the first allegation came out. The media used the hashtag MeToo movement in an attempt to redo Cuomo's image. This is a way for the Democrats to call out sexual harassment in their party after the blunder of ignoring it with Joe Biden. They can claim, they, they then try to get Cuomo out of office and then use the magic of a PR spin to say that he's a remodeled man, a more sensitive man for the next primary. I mean, season two of Cuomo and the COVID is a season of self-reflection after these, uh, after all these scandals. And season three is clearly about coming back on top. And with Cuomo's refusal to resign, it's throwing the party's plan all out of whack. I mean, they, they might not renew his show for the next season. Look, Andrew Cuomo is not leadership material. He does deserve the Emmy because he's a great actor. He spent months pretending to care about people, while behind the scenes he legislated the opposite. Leaders don't sacrifice people because the opposition might make them look bad. They don't invade personal spaces, make unwanted sexual advances, or faulty apologies. Leaders take responsibility, learn from their mistakes, and do better so others may do so also. Cuomo should be rejected by anyone who is against corrupt and devious politicians. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this dispatch, please make sure that you hit the like button uh, and you share this out with your friends, with your enemies, anybody you think should hear content like this. Uh, content like this is often suppressed, so I, I very much depend on you guys helping me get the word out uh, and making sure that you are subscribed to these podcasts uh, and are getting notifications that these things are coming out. I'm very excited to announce that I'm bringing back the live virtual stand-up comedy shows once a month, last Friday of every month. Tickets for those shows are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're on my website, you can do a plethora of different things. You can catch up on episodes of this very podcast, uh, of my live stream show, Road Reflections, and past episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, uh, which are related to the live virtual comedy shows that I'm doing. That's that's how they're recorded. They're recorded in front of a live virtual audience. So uh, you can catch up on those. Uh, if you want to, you can also make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. Sustaining members get free tickets to those live virtual comedy shows I just talked about. Uh, they also get additional bonus stand-up comedy content that nobody else gets, as well as some free additional fun gifts that I am planning to, uh, to send to uh, the sustaining members. 
You can also check out my stand-up comedy albums uh, that are available on my website. And if you go to my Bandcamp, which is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com, you can get pretty much my entire stand-up comedy collection for free. Uh, uh, there's, I think, one comedy album that you might have to pay for right now, uh, but everything's on a pay-what-you-can uh, price level. So if you would like to get most of that stuff for free, you can do so over on my Bandcamp page, which, again, is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. And lastly, I also want to let you guys know that uh, if, uh, if you're not a fan of the YouTubes, uh, or the Facebooks and their censorship of uh, of content creators uh, that uh, talk about anti-establishment topics. Uh, a good place to go right now would be to Rockfin. You can find my channel over on rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, They're a blockchain crypto site that primarily focuses on ensuring that content creators can earn a living by creating content and they're uncensored so you can basically talk about what you feel like you need to talk about without the censorship of any sort of algorithm uh, and uh, and all the content will be curated based on what you subscribe to so once again go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, the subscriptions are about ten dollars a month but when you become a subscriber over at rockfin you not only get my premium content but you get the premium content of basically every single content creator that's on Rockfin. That's Graham Elwood, that's Ron Pacone, Lee Camp, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Jimmy Dore, The Convo Couch, Action for Assange, and plenty more. Uh, so be sure uh, to to check out Rockfin, and if you're ready to leave YouTube, that is the place to go to, to become a subscriber. Leave tips for channels that you like, and there's plenty of free content on there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in.